When I first became interested in fishing in Canada, I liked the fact that for such a popular fish in other countries as common carp, there was no conservation restrictions either by season or by quantity for this fish. You can catch carp as much as you want, whenever you want, and with any method you want. It gives me an indescribable pleasure when by the end of the day, at the end of a fishing trip, we always have a couple good carps in our fish basket with other fishermen who like to fish for bass or trout or pike haven't caught anything the whole day. Fishing for carp in Canada has been long unpopular and it has also been considered invasive. Although recently the situation has begun to change, not in carp's favor, but the popularity of fishing has been growing over time. I wanted to share my method of carp fishing with everyone who loves to fish. We never stay until late at night to catch this careful and smart fox. We arrive at the lake at around 10 a.m. and leave at around 5 in the evening, even on hot summer days. And during this time, we always catch carp, and not only carp, using my simple method. I prepare my rig by combining different methods of making common carp fishing hair rigs, and instead of attaching the bait to the hair and keeping it loose, as everyone recommends, I prepare the carp rig a little bit differently. And this is how I do it. At the beginning, I put the corn on the hook, completely covering it up to the end, and then using a thin wire, bent in half, I pass it through the loop at the end of the hair, and then pass the wire, like a needle, through the sweet canned corn. Putting it on the hair, and then fastening the loop of the hair to the tip of the hook on which it is already covered with corn. At the end, I close the sharp tip of the hook with a good dense piece of corn. I get all my rig covered in corn completely and by doing that, I can get a pretty big substantial chunk of corn. I don't use any homemade dough or boilies bait. I tried them and I didn't get a successful result. Nothing attracts carp like sweet corn. And second place is earthworm and therefore I think that ordinary sweet corn is the best bait and bait for carp in spring, summer, and in autumn. Sometimes to enhance the effect, instead of the last corn on the tip of the hook, I can place a piece of earthworm, but not always, only in season, because the worm can be grabbed by perch or bass and ruin my bait and distract the fishing process. Therefore, corn is simply safer. Neither anise drops nor strawberry jam can replace sweet corn for carp. If there is one in a pond, it'll always fall on the hook. And you can catch other fish. You can catch catfish. And by the way, it is very tasty, almost boneless, tender white fish. It is important to have a good, healthy running weight, preferably one that will not cling to the bottom of stones and driftwoods. And first, I need heavy weight to help me cast as far as possible, since carps are very careful and therefore the further the better. Long distance casting is half of the battle. Sensitive carp should not be able to hear you or see you. The running sinker should be so that when the carp starts to try the bait, he does not feel resistance and does not change his mind. Carp have very sensitive lips and antennae, so they shouldn't feel any metal or tension. And this is why my tackle works almost 100% of the time. Having tested the bait with his lips, he pulls it in with great speed and then the hook digs in. That's all. Now, all you have to do is be patient and wait quietly. If there is carp in the lake, he will not be able to resist the temptation and he will not keep you waiting too long. In the past 20 years, common carp was considered an invasive fish, but today it is classified as a naturalized species, not to be confused with the invasive Asian carp that threatens the Great Lakes. This is a different fish. In addition, some biologists believe that the common carp may even be benefit to Canadian lakes. The presence of carp in the pond improves the purity and quality of the water. By eating algae and vegetation in stagnant ponds, it improves the oxygen in exchange in the water. In addition, juvenile carp and roe are a food source for many local predator fish, including trout, pike, and bass. So the common carp brought here many years ago has become an integral part of the ecosystem. When we first arrived in Canada, many fishermen considered carp as a weedy fish, not edible and not interesting in sports terms. But now the attitude towards carp has changed. Many people love to catch and release them. 
Carp is a strong fish and it's cunning. And it's not so easy even to catch and to pull out of the water. You need to free the fish from the hook and place it in a cage if you do decide to leave it for dinner. Cleaning the carp is also not easy. First, you need to remove the head and the entrails. I use powerful scissors that can bite large hard bones in the head area. It is difficult to clean carp. Its scales are large and hard and therefore the best way is to not clean it at all because the fish skin is removed from it simply. I cut it lightly on all the sides and I use my hands or pliers to remove the skin along with the scales. Sometimes it is possible to remove everything in one motion, so it is easier than peeling off rough scales. It remains only to cut a clean filet. The meat of the carp is reddish and some believe that it resembles beef. Many believe that carp is bony, but in such a filet, only a small amount of Y-shaped bones remain, which are really best removed when the fish is cooked and you're eating it. The remains of the fish, the insides, scales, bones, and the head are good to use in the garden as a wonderful fertilizer. There is a video about this on our channel if you'd like to check that out. The link is below. In Australia, for example, they use carp for fertilization and it's actually used on an industrial scale. So, to the kitchen! I want to show you how to cook carp so that it turns out tender and juicy and doesn't taste like fish at all, but rather more like veal. I need two cast iron pans, a head of chopped onion, two to three chopped tomatoes, a little flour, vegetable oil, salt, and spices to taste. You can replace the tomatoes, if none are available, with tomato paste and you can also use them together. You can begin by mixing a little salt with flour and add any mixed spices into there. Pour the vegetable oil, here I'm gonna be using olive oil, into a frying pan and turn on the stove to medium high. Dip the sliced filet pieces in flour and place them in a preheated pan. After that, when the fish is fried on one side, turn it over to the other and fill it with chopped onions. We're going to continue frying the other side of the fish with the onions. In the meantime, in a smaller cast iron skillet, we're going to prepare a simple sauce or a tomato fry. I'm going to add a little bit of vegetable oil and fry fresh chopped tomatoes and to enhance the color. If the tomatoes aren't very red, I can add two spoonfuls of tomato paste. Tomatoes are juicy and you usually will not need any water. I just add the spices to taste fresh or any dried greens, basil, coriander, or bay leaves. And when everything is ready, I'm going to pour the tomato sauce onto the fish and the onions. I'm going to then bring it to a boil and boil low and slow for about five minutes. And then the dish is ready. It looks appetizing and the taste is just great. The fish with this preparation even loses the smell of fish and it resembles meat. Decorate with herbs and serve with any side or by yourself. People who don't know it's carp will think it's some sort of exotic seafood. So please try it out. And thank you for staying until the end.